Beth Ray, and I love cookbooks. While most kids stayed up late reading Nancy Drew, I was staying up burning through my mother's cookbook collection. Well, here at the Food Channel, it is like Christmas every day. Publishers send us their cookbooks, we pull them off the shelves, find recipes, and we get to make them. It is so fun, I am almost jealous of myself. <laughs> One cookbook that I'm completely enthralled in right now is Sarah Foster's Southern Kitchen. It is comfort food. It is rustic, down-home goodness. One recipe that I had to try of hers was her autumnal chicken pot pie. And this is how it went. First thing we did was melt our butter down. When it was hot, we added our minced shallots. Now shallots are the love child from the onion and the garlic, and they are delicious. After they cooked down, we added our mushrooms, which is one of my favorite ingredients, and I use every single one. Boop, boop, boop. The mushrooms cook down pretty fast, and the recipe says you can add more butter if you think it needs it. Every recipe needs more butter, in my opinion, so we added a little more. I turned the heat down a little bit and then I sprinkled my flour in to make a roux. And basically, that's the thickening agent for the pot pie. I cooked it for just a couple minutes just to get that floury taste out. The chicken broth went in next. Now the chicken broth gives that simmering all day yummy on your stove flavor. Once it started to thicken up, we were ready to add our spices and chicken. I used a pre-cooked rotisserie chicken, which saved me a lot of time, and I love the flavor. Okay, we're going to add some sage, some pepper, and then some salt. I let it simmer for about 10 minutes, and then I was ready to add the squash. I had the squash already prepared by one of my fellow chefs and added it to our mixture. Look at that pretty pop of color the squash adds to the dish. I love it. Once it was mixed and it was cooled down, I was ready for the puff pastry. I sprinkled a little flour and rolled out my puff pastry until it was about a fourth of an inch thick. Next, we took our gorgeous filling and scooped it into our pie dish filled to just about a half inch from the top. The beautiful puff pastry was next, and I just layered it over the top of the pie and trimmed it with scissors. Now, it doesn't need to look perfect. The imperfection is what gives it that rustic look. I then made some vents for the heat to escape. I had so much fun cutting out some leaves to decorate the top of the pie, and I didn't forget to add stem marks to the leaves for an authentic look. Once I was done with that, I brushed on the egg wash, which gives the puff pastry that golden brown, gorgeous color that you see in the cookbook. And don't forget to brush the edges of your pie too. Then it was off to bake for about 45 to 50 minutes in a preheated oven at 375 degrees or until it got that nice and golden brown color. Cookbooks are great motivators to get you in your kitchen, try different ingredients, and find those recipe treasures that will define your kitchen and your memories. Thanks for joining me on today's cookbook. I'm Beth, and I'll see you next time at the bookshelf.